Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Nice. Okay, it's working. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, how did I name this thing? Speed sculpting live session, I guess. So, um, let's actually go back to the file browser. So, at the start of the year, I actually made some sculpts for the Sculpt January. So. I kind of restricted myself to just like about an hour to sculpt each of these things, which, okay, usually I went over time, so that was exciting. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take these kind of as an inspiration of like, okay, I'm gonna take like a simple concept, like a drawing that I made, and I'm gonna see if I can sculpt that thing in an hour. So uh, there's also um, a little workshop on the Blender Cloud if you're interested with, with, for some tutorials or something, uh, where I go a bit more in depth uh, into these things and um, techniques. So let's just close this. So also I, I hope you watched the, the talk by Pablo de Barra yesterday about the new sculpting tools because I am going to use uh, Blender 2.81 for this to kind of show off the new tools a little bit just as much as I can cram into an hour. So let's see. Uh, while still getting something, like a little bit of a result out of it. So yesterday he talked about like how to use them, how they kind of work, so now let's kind of see them into action, I guess. So uh, I guess let's just jump right in, get cozy, sit down, relax. I don't have a chair though, so you are more fortunate than me right now. And I, d I have my latte macchiato. Mm. Comfy. All right. So, ah, I made this thing, this uh, drawing. You might recognize it as the little Susanna Ward pose, like heavily adjusted, so making it a bit more stylized and cartoony. So let's just get let's just get right into it. Just gonna readjust myself here. So. Basically, at the start of it, like usually I have like a sphere over here, just um, simple. And I'm just going to like block out everything, kind of ah, <laughs> moving stuff around. So usually I start with a head. So in this case, I'm just gonna build something from just simple spheres. Also, I built like my own little pie menus and stuff like that to kind of um, optimize it for myself. So I can just like take simple spheres. Uh, usually I also use cubes from time to time, just keep it, keeping it simple and just starting to kind of like lay out just like whatever we need for the head. I also already like installed a little camera over here to the side. So that kind of helps me out of like, we, I only have an hour so I need to be efficient about how much I can actually do in this time frame. So usually I just kind of go from, yeah, whatever I see, I see from the camera perspective, just screw everything else. So I'm just gonna like, lay out some stuff over here. By the way, a lot of this is going to be me in silence. <laughs> so get used to that. I'm gonna commentate as much as possible over it, but let's just see. So, so far, just everything in object mode. Once we actually get to, um, we want to mirror some of this across, usually what I do is just, first of all, I like go over all of this, kill the, apply the scale and rotation, just to not get any weird sculpting issues, and mirror it across, oh wait, Alt D, duplicating it, so we keep the object data linked, and mirroring it across on the other side, just so, when I sculpt on one of these ears, actually the changes are already applied on the other side, but this thing still get, keeps its own, its own kind of rotation and everything. So next up, I can already kind of see, okay, it doesn't quite fit into the camera's perspective, so we can just like kind of uh, go into camera perspective and kind of realign it so that it roughly fits into what the drawing shows. I 
can also change the pivot point to the active object. This usually helps, which is like, uh, sorry, to rotate everything across a certain point. Also something I didn't do with the ears right now, just like change the pivot to actually the usual rotation point. This usually can be very useful. Just to not like constantly rotate and then translate as well. So I'm just gonna continue just creating these little spheres. Like usually I create two spheres over here for the shoulders. These I'm just gonna duplicate. And also we can just like take this guy over here. Oh wait, I'm just gonna create a new sphere over here. Scale up along the X. And this is gonna be our arm for now. We can just like realign the 3D cursor, set origin to 3D cursor, and now we actually have this as the rotation point. Or not quite. <laughs> can just duplicate this all across. And yeah, I basically here on the side with this little window, what I ba basically did is just set the shading to a single color and then just made that black. And that way we keep kind of an overview over the silhouette, which can be very helpful. We can just do the same thing over here with the legs. Since we still have the axes aligned, we can just scale it along everything except the local x-axis, make it thicker. Just get it, getting everything kind of into place. Yeah, I'm just gonna duplicate these. Pretty much almost done with this step. So yeah, the only thing right now kind of missing are the hands, the feet, and the tail. Ah. <laughs> so the tail, I'm just gonna create it from a simple, uh, come on, from simple cylinder. Scale it up, set the pivot point over here to the selection, set the origin to that point, and then we already have somewhat <laughs> something that we can eventually use as a tail. That's good enough. There we go. So I'm gonna skip the hands for right now, but yes. So these guys still have their local kind of orientation so we can use symmetry to sa save ourselves some time. So I'm just gonna use uh, the trim brush to trim, trim away some of this because we have kind of the face over here which can be like a bit of this flat plane.
So right now, I'm just trying to think in like uh, the most simplest shapes possible. So what are kind of the shapes that we see in, in the drawing, in the concept? So we kind of have these like really prominent eyebrows over here. I'm just gonna move back the ears. You have like a really large kind of almost triangle formation with the head. You can smooth it out a little bit more. And I'm gonna actually change this to vertex colors. Also again, made like my own little menus to quickly, not even having to go into these kind of menus anymore, clicking all the buttons, but actually just like going to certain presets. There we go. Also, I can really recommend to just like make your own shortcuts for everything. Like basically all of these tools in the site, I gave them like custom shortcuts, especially the new ones because um, a lot of them don't, just don't have a shortcut and I, I tend to use them all the time. And some of them I just simplified the shortcut completely like uh, I think it was shift K for a snake hook, I just made it X and then uh, gave the draw brush the shortcut D and it's just something that is mostly on the left side of the keyboard. Also for like clay has a, has a shortcut C, so I just made Alt C for, for the short, uh, shortcut for the clay, br uh, clay strips brush. Also use uh, the, the colors for the different brushes. This can be super helpful uh, to not just like read the different brushes that you made. Like what, I'm, what brush I'm currently using, you can just like immediately see it by the color of your brush. Also, I think the most noteworthy thing that I usually just say, uh, for the longest time while sculpting, on anything, your your model is going to look like crap. <laughs> Just get used to it. As long as you kind of already have like the your, your kind of a vision and shapes in mind, then it's fine. You'll get there eventually. It just takes a bit of time and effort. Also, the, you might recognize this. This is actually the clay strips brush, but I mixed it with uh, the auto smooth over here. With also with pressure sensitivity, so that way, if I do apply a lot of pressure, I get a lot of the clay strips brush effect, but there's a bit of smoothing going on already, so it's mixing the influence with the smooth brush. But then once you um, apply fewer, like less and less pressure, it just becomes a smooth brush. So you're kind of doing two brushes in one, basically, which can be very helpful. All right, <laughs> this is sort of getting there. And he, also even though the, the grab brush got massively improved basically by some added functionality and um, the new fall off, fall off curve presets, which can be just way more ac accurate and especially for smooth fall off brush behavior, it can be super useful to just use those instead. Uh, the grab brush works way better now. You don't get these bumpy surfaces. But I still really like to use the snake hook a lot of the time, just because of the, it's, I mean, the two brushes are basically the same. It's just uh, on a core behavior level, it's just that the snake hook kind of dynamically lets go of geometry and picks new geometry up as it goes. And just, yeah, I don't know. While I'm defining the shapes, I really like using it. Oh. One negative side effect of like having all your shortcuts on the on the left side of your keyboard is you tend to click the wrong ones often. So <laughs> I'm like I have like Alt D for the draw sharp tool, which is basically just like the draw brush with a better, uh, for, with like a sharper curve to it. But then at the same time I have Alt C, which is like right next to it, and I constantly press the wrong one. <laughs> so I still need to figure that out. And then eventually like, 
eventually you might stretch your geometry a bit thin, so eventually, yeah, use the ream measure, which is now integrated into Blender. So I can just remesh it and bam, instant. It also has the shortcut control R for your information. Also, I assigned a shortcut for wireframe overlay, so I'm using that one all the time, so that's very helpful. Also, don't spend too much time on one area of the body because like I, I might just like keep going with the with the face, but at the same time the the body is still just spheres. So it can be really helpful to just like bounce from one area of your scope to the next to keep everything kind of at the same level of progression. Because especially if you have a deadline, if you set yourself a time limit of one hour, at some point you need to stop. So it's kind of weird when you have like a nicely detailed head and then the rest is just cubes or something. <laughs> oh. Also, I, ho I hope the, the display, uh, the interface resolution is good enough. Okay, I heard a yes in the audience. <laughs> Hmm? Paths between the objects. To just oh yeah, I mean you could if you want. There's this nice setting over here which is um, lock object modes. If you just like have that disabled, you can just like set one object like the lapelect to be um, in sculpt mode, and then Alt select another object, set that one to be sculpt mode, and then just like switch between the two, and they're just all set to be in sculpt mode. But I find it sometimes a bit unpredictable, so I usually just like leave it on. Also, since there's no clear indication which object you're currently editing in sculpt mode, I think there used to be like a bit of a color overlay over it that the object that you're in sculpt mode in was always a little bit brighter. But um, yeah, maybe that should come back <laughs> eventually in 2.8. It used to be in 2.79. But yeah, for example, the tail, we still have it kind of like in the straight angle, which is not very nice. And we like based on the drawing, it would be nice to have it kind of in this curve. What I would usually do is just like take the snake hook and use the rake setting, rake setting which like gives it a bit of like rotation. Um, but there's also this new pose brush. So I can just like, it's, it's usually a bit choppy the way um, that it looks, but I can just like, Take the post brush. Eh, let's go f into the camera perspective over here. Set this one back to be silhouette. And I can just go in and not block what I'm seeing with my own hand. <laughs> just start posing the tail over here. Nice and easy. And like I mentioned this in previous videos that I did that I would use I would try to like set up a little rig basically for this. I just start adding bones so I can like, start just like, basically what I'm doing with a post brush, just doing that with individual bones, but now it's just a brush, which is amazing. I can, I can just like roughly get it into shape, remesh, use the inflate brush, inflate a little bit, use the snake hook. I could, I could also just like enable dynamic topology since uh, that one's still, I actually rarely use dynamic topology nowadays, which is very fascinating because I was relying on it for so much. Um, but the remesh is just so much faster and the performance is just such a massive increase, so I almost never use it anymore. Uh, the two cases really where I'm still using it um, is when you want to like pull out snakes, basically, with a snake hook brush. Or if you, um, if you want to have like you have a certain area in your sculpt that you really want to have detailed, you want to have a lot of resolution there, so you can just go into dynamic topology and just use the simplify br uh, brush over here, which just basically has that one function of uh, like remeshing your, your uh, topology that you're sculpting on. So I just merged all of these objects and I'm just gonna remesh them and bam, it's all done. <laughs> this used to be super, 
just control R. Yeah, does it immediately. So it's basically instant with a pretty good topology, actually. It's not that bad. Um, I'm just going to disable symmetry at this point. And. Hmm? Oh no, UVs, vertex colors, and everything, th that's just gone. <laughs> so it basically destroys your entire object and just re uh, replaces it with, uh, with a new one. But there's for sure going to come, like uh, in, the sculpt in the experimental sculpting branch, there were already like features in place where you can like transfer um, your vertex colors, for example. And the only thing that's still in here is you can tick an option over here that says preserve painted mask. So if you remesh, your mask is still going to be there, which is quite useful. But yeah, eventually I, I hope there will be like an option to just like kind of estimate UVs that you had or vertex group, especially like face maps once that becomes a thing in sculpt mode to kind of uh, or like categorize your different parts of the mesh. So yeah, now I'm just starting to merge these, control R and it's done. All of these objects have like indivi an individual resolution set. So it's kind of, it can be annoying to just like go in here and set a, another one for every one of them. So there's actually a little hidden feature of just like selecting all of these all of your objects, and just going into sculpt mode, remesh, holding alt, and then setting a different number, and applying, and now every object actually has this resolution set. It's, it's a bit hidden, there, there should be like, this, this kind of feature should be clearly communicated, but it's there if you want to use it. I'm also not even using the crease brush anymore, almost. There's, there's still like cases where I really want to use it, but it's usually like late in the, in the sculpting process when I really want to polish some, uh, some aspects, some areas, because the crease brush basically, it's, ju it's just a draw brush, but uh, it actually uh, pinches the areas that you're sculpting on. But with the, that can like cause some weird stretching with your topology and mess up your sculpt. Um, which can be annoying to fix, basically with a lot of smoothing, but with the draw sharp, it just adds a sharp curvature to it, a sharp profile. So that saves you some time. Yeah. Just going over it with the inflate brush to like make the upper part a bit thicker. So yeah, and once you're happy with these things, you can basically just merge them. I'm maybe gonna change the arms a little bit. And I should finally start adding hands. <laughs> so this can just be done by simple cubes if you look at the hand and we want to do it quickly. We can just like add a cube over here, select these edges, oh yeah, median point, pivot point scale this down, add another cube for like the fingers. We can fix a lot of weird issues in sculpt mode anyway, so this can just be like really rough. Just merge these, apply scale and rotation, and remesh, or first set a higher resolution. My arm is actually getting kind of tired. Usually I have the keyboard actually in front of me. <laughs> Just leaning over to the side is going to be pretty uncomfortable. Uh, so yeah, the hand position is already way off. We want it kind of over here, which is interesting. So 
So yeah, the arm, like, there's, there's often so much faking going on, <laughs> just like with the length of the limbs and what actually, what's actually plausible. So it, in the end, it just needs to kind of work from the camera perspective. That's the most important thing, especially when you set yourself with such an insane time limit of just like an hour. It's, uh, there's no time, no wiggle room. You just need to go with it. And with the hand, just to make it a bit simpler for ourselves, just again, Alt-D duplicating it, Control-M along the x-axis, and now we have a hand over here. Kind of. <laughs> I guess it can't be seen as a hand right now, <laughs> if you squint a bit. So, I'm just going to sketch basically in the fingers. <laughs> Clay strips, add kind of a thumb. Also, I can just like, you know, local view this thing. And in the, in the other viewport over here, we still see what we're doing relative to the rest of the body. Yeah, kind of works for now. Again, like, keep it simple for now. You don't need to polish everything as you go. You can keep it super simple. And eventually come back to it if you have time and polish it more. Yeah, but I really want to add a bit more detail to the face right now. So we can also increase the resolution. Another good thing with the remesher is you can actually go way more high res than with dynamic topology and still have a relatively good performance. But also in this case, like once you go really high, at some point the smoothing is not enough that comes with the remeshing. So everything is kind of odd now. So one thing you might want to do is like smooth over it with a smooth brush, but there's also these handy mesh filters over here that, that just lets you uh, apply certain operations to the entire mesh, anything that is not masked off. So I can just set it to smooth, just go over it and everything is smooth. You can also do that with inflating, scaling, and there's for sure going to be more thing or things, or just, you can just add noise over everything. Maybe at some point there will be like a texture support, which would be would be insane. Oh, no symmetry. At least like now with 2.881 with the uh, new sculpting features, you also have this handy indicator of that you're actually using symmetry right now. So uh, this actually also works with all the sym symmetry settings. So you, so you could just like go nuts over here with the tiling and radial symmetry and just like, oh my God, so many cursors. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually get a nice preview now of whatever your uh, your settings are with the brush. Also, the brush orientation that you see over here that like nicely follows the surface of the uh, of the model. It's not just a vis neat visual thing. This is actually tied to this normal radius over here, which you could set like really low, and then it like snaps like crazily to like basically like over here like a th like three like 4% of the radius of your brush. So just like it uses that to sample the orientation of the brush, which actually does define the orientation that you're extruding outwards, that you're like adding or subtracting to. And especially for like flattened brushes, that's insanely useful. So hard surface sculpting uh, is so much easier now. I wish I had this when I was sculpting the, the rocks on spring. It's like, <laughs> Jesus, so many new brush settings now. Actually, for hard surface sculpting, it's, it's really useful. I'm just going to move this out. Also, keep rotating around your model. Like, don't just like work from one, one view or something. You need to 
be constantly aware of you, all the shapes and forms that you have, but also <laughs> at the same time, like if you only have one hour, then you also need to cheat a lot of it. But still, having like really strong shapes from all perspectives that can be super helpful and appealing when you actually render the thing, because you also need to think about like how does this look when it's it actually casts shadows on itself. So, I also change this a bit higher, control R, and immediately remeshes. There's of course going to be limits, like if you set it insanely high and you remesh to something like with uh, five million polygons, then yeah, you need to wait a bit, but still it's way faster than the same option over here in dynamic topology where you can just like detail flood fill everything. That's, go you're gonna wait like many, many minutes to, for that to actually be finished, while in with a new remesher, you get it in a, like ten seconds. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. It always looks hideous until it doesn't. <laughs> That's the general rule of sculpting. Also, I forgot the nose. Just gonna add a subdivision surface modifier. Perfect. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, I, I guess I could add like an entire Suzanne head and just like le leave the nose and delete everything else. <laughs> I could have actually like started from the from the Suzanne head as a base mesh, but I just really wanted to do this all from scratch. Also because if you look at the thing, it is going to be looking basically vastly different. Oh, didn't didn't do it, no. <laughs> oh. There we go. Yay. Okay, I'm just gonna set the pivot point to be active element. I wanna rotate the head a little bit. And now it's just going to take the center object as the pivot point to rotate around. Okay. Now it's really just about like, I, I have kind of the basic shapes there, so now I, I want to match it to the concept art. So I can just like freely move it around however I, however I want in the end. I can make the nose a bit smaller, move the mouth object around. also hide the arms, which can be very distracting. <laughs> this is this is way too much for an hour. <laughs> but still, I'm gonna try. Yeah, I think at this point I'm just gonna merge these two objects. Again, remesh, bam, done. With dynamic topology, it was constantly important that I sm smooth all the time, and I'm still doing it, even though like I don't really have to. <laughs> I don't need to fight all these artifacts anymore. Yeah, and at some point, you can also just like disable the symmetry. I'm just gonna add the eyes now. I'm just gonna use it, uh, I'm just gonna do it by just like adding geometry over here. I could already insert like spheres to it, but it's actually kind of nice to first like have like, a, oh, no symmetry. <laughs> to actually just like add like a temporary bulge to this. Also, I'm, I'm, I am using the clay strips brush, but then just like with the, smooth, with the smoothing at the same time just like with less pen pressure. So it actually becomes quite, uh, uh, as like a multi-purpose brush, it becomes quite useful. Oh, 
my god. <laughs> it's still hideous. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, at some point it's just also just wise to just like screw symmetry, just move stuff around. You can also just like go to the camera perspective and do it from there. Just cheat the eyes. <laughs> you don't have time to make it work from every angle. So yeah, that's kind of there. A little bit, somewhat. <laughs> yeah. Also something that you can do is just like, um, what I generally like to do, I wish the reprojecting of the of the the vertex colors actually still worked, but you can actually just like start painting over it with vertex colors just to see how it looks with uh, different elements. But yeah, I'm just gonna leave it for now. That comes in later. So pupils, of course, are still missing. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh yeah, at some point increase the strength of your smooth brush with the higher resolution definitely needed. Jesus. <laughs> I'm actually gonna drop this. <laughs> this is getting too warm. <laughs> no! I'm gonna add the spheres now, it's time. When you just sculpt in the eyes like that, it's just, it's not round. <laughs> it's, uh, you really need the, the real spheres as a reference. So now I can just fix the forms. Also another little trick of just like, if you're not using like uh, auto depth or like any of these fancy preferences to like rotate around your 3D cursor position, then just like hold Alt and middle mouse button click on any area and it's going to recenter. Oh, and it's going to recenter on any of these parts. <laughs> Just 
sorting out these bumps, this takes usually the most amount of time. Now I feel bad for like spending so much time on the on the head and we don't even have feet yet. <laughs> um, I might actually just like reuse the hand, however bad it looks, but hey, it's already kind of there if we squint. <laughs> I'm just gonna apply the scale which inverts the normals and just recalculate them. I was really going back and forth when drawing this, like how how should the feet actually look? <laughs> because monkeys and apes, like the, the our feet are just going all over the place. Every species has like, the, the shapes are just crazy. It's just weirdly deformed, it looks unnatural. Just making that look appealing would be really difficult and you really need to go cartoony. Jesus. Definitely apply a rotation if you want to use the snake hook brush because for some reason the rotation of this brush is actually also uh, is being manipulated by the rotation of the object which makes it just bug out. Ah, it's good enough for now. And then again, Alt D, duplicate, put it into place, Control M. Oh, now this can move up a bit. Also, at some point, the pose really needs to be adjusted. If we just compare the silhouette of this, it's not really there. By the way, another little thing, like you don't need to use the post brush if you want to. I mean, you could also just like use the new rotation, uh, like the new transform tools. And it's actually a really neat little trick where you can just like now with the mask expand that was like mentioned in Pablo's talk, just like shift A, and just like expand a mask outwards. And it's just going to snap the, the pivot point of the transform tool to the edge of the mask, which is like, Especially when you want to pose everything, like you merged already all these objects together so you can't rotate them individually. Just like being able to mask off an entire like limb or something and it's just like works. It's really powerful. I can rotate this guy with it.
a lot of the times I don't even use the flatten tool. That's like, a lot, um, besides the using the snake brush for basically everything instead of the grab brush, I use the smooth brush for flattening everything. Just if you set it strong enough, it can be like actually a, a really good way of smoothing out surfaces, as long as you're not too high poly already. With like a relatively low resolution, it should be fine. Hmm, all right. Also in case of the eyes, you can also just mask out parts of it, just to be sure that it actually matches. And again, set this to, uh, yeah, vertex colors. And just, Control I, I can use the mesh filter to just like inflate this inwards if I wanted to, or outwards. And again, move all of this in. forgot about this thing. Mm. Mm. By the way, also if you like, if you already like, you don't need to completely like repaint the mask if it doesn't fit. You can also just like, if, if you notice, oh, I actually want it to be a bit bigger, you can hit A and you get this little pie menu over here that actually lets you be able to grow your mask or shrink it to just like invert it, clear it, smooth the mask or make it sharp. So that's really handy. But yeah, I need it to be a bit positioned over here. I should actually get used to always using this by menu. Let's invert this in. Yeah, I wish at this point it would lo already look a bit better. But yeah, um, also a crutch that I actually rely on sometimes, especially when the time is running short. You don't need to always create new geometry for everything. Like, for example, I did paint in like some eyebrows and eyelashes. And what I could use at some point is just like, a cr I could just paint it in with vertex colors. Especially if it's already like, if it's such a dark element it can be useful of just like obscuring these areas, or just painting it in instead of just modeling everything. <laughs> Jesus. Now I, I actually wish I had the second screen with like some references of like this smile. <laughs> It's so weird to sculpt, which is like actually another point. Just like if you want to, if you want to sculpt something tricky and you don't quite know how to do it, keep like some sort of reference on the side that can just like save you time experimenting around and trying stuff out.
So yeah, at some point you could just like go in here and shift K. Ah, nope. Paint set vertex colors. What the? Interesting. Now it works. And then go for an even darker color and just start actually over here and just start painting in the iris. Especially with the eyes, I would actually start vertex painting them really soon just because it can be such a helpful guide of just like finding the appeal and actually knowing where everything is. Colors can help a lot. I also like to just like add these little highlights over here as actual geometry. <laughs> so yeah, now I could actually go in here and start drawing in these eyebrows. So you could just go in and do the same thing for the eyelashes. What I usually like to do is just uh, mask out an area in sculpt mode and extract the mask as a new geometry, which is actually really ni nice and easy to do now. You can just like go in here, click mask, mask extract, and bam, you have a new object, and you could just like really quickly and easily make eyebrows and stuff like that. Especially hair, anything hair related. But I, also clothing and stuff like that can be really helpful. Hmm. Oh, I'm in sculpt mode. <laughs> Still painting masks. Once you have these little elements painted in, you could actually go in and just like, just sculpt over it. Just adjust the shapes so that it kind of looks right. I, still, I think I got like five minutes left, so. <laughs> I didn't get very far. You can also go in and just like select all of these object, objects and merge them temporarily at least. And that way you can like just sculpt over them all at the same time if you plan to do like some broader uh, proportion changes, which definitely happens. And it's okay if like everything morphs a little bit, if it like becomes really weird from other angles because in the end, in this case, we do want it to look kind of right from the camera perspective. I can again go into vertex paint mode over here. Start painting in these fur patches.
Yeah, good enough. There we go, that's already looking kind of closer to the thing that I want. Of course, like, in the end, you can spend so much time afterwards polishing this thing, and the more time you spend on it, the better it will look. And also, with like one hour, I, w I am rushing things, so you could go at it way more methodically and actually sculpt the limbs with a bit more attention to detail and stuff like that but I do not have that luxury right now. Just going in with the inflate brush. Oh yeah, and actually, one last thing, I can just like merge all of this, control R, I can also increase the resolution a little bit. Oh yeah, sculpt mode. You can also find the remesher settings um, in here in the object data if you want to. So it's not all based on sculpt mode, you can actually access this at any point in time. Again, all of these little artifacts over here, this is like already like a lot, so just like take the, the mesh filter, smooth, bam, done. And I also actually really like to just like experiment with brushes, so I actually made this little hair brush over here. So I didn't paint in some hair patches, which is kind of insane, but I could just like then go in here and I have like a texture applied to it. And I could go Control F, rotate the texture, and pull out kind of hair strands over here. Mostly it's nice to have for the silhouette of the sculpt. Doesn't need to be super accurate, super pretty. Oh yeah. Also at some point just like setting everything to smooth shading is nice. Uh, so yeah, it's it's getting there, I guess. <laughs> Time's almost up. I cannot stress enough, like definitely try to add some some eyelets. It's always going to look better with eyelets.
we go. Yeah, the hands are still really crude, but I guess this is unavoidable. Also, since I duplicated these and then mirrored them across, it's basically impossible to sculpt on both hands. I need to sculpt on one of them, that the one that still has the, the scaling set to one, or, okay, somewhat one. If I'm sculpting on the other one, then every brush effect is just going to be inverted. Also remeshing, like you can just remesh this object and the other object is going to get that same effect. And if you want to have it smooth shaded, there's also an option over here, smooth shading. I just generally like to have it on flat shading because it's an immediately intuitive way of actually seeing the resolution that you're working with. Yeah, I don't think I can work on the hands more than this. Let's actually set it back to silhouette shading. And just try to move stuff around to kind of match the pose more. Also again, hairbrush. All right, time's up. This is as good as it's going to get. All right. <laughs> All right, awesome. That was one hour. So uh, you can always pick this up again, polish more, just spend more time on it, but it's not quite the point, you don't want to have a polished, you don't necessarily want to have a polished piece, of course you always want one, but uh, speed sculpting is really just more about like, okay, time management, how, how, what path should I take, what shortcuts should I use, just optimizing your workflow and cutting corners, depending on how much time you have and still ending up with something that is a result, <laughs> something that you can actually say, yeah, yeah, that was, that was kind of what I was going for. So. Yeah, I, I can recommend actually setting yourself like an hour time limit from time to time just like to see what you can get out of that time. But if you want to have an actual like kind of polished piece, then yeah, you need to have more time. But if you're interested in this sort of thing, there's also the, um, the there's multiple challenges online that actually do these kind of things where you like, uh, you do like a spit sculpt where you have only 45 minutes and then you po post and share your, your results online. Uh, or there's like events like Sculpt January and Sculpt uh, Timber that where you have like, it's basically like Inktober where you just like have one day for each sculpt. You just need to have a constant output every day, one of them. And then with like a predetermined uh, calendar of topics. So if you're interested, just try it out. It's actually, very helpful in like training how fast you can get something done. And yeah, I guess that's basically it. Thank you very much for coming.